Hello everyone, welcome to Learn Smart Coding. In this video, we are going to talk about how to provision the Azure Cosmos DB in Azure Portal and we will also set up the database, containers and items for the containers. Come, let's dive in. Here's the portal that I've logged in. So here in the search box, go and type Azure Cosmos DB. The overview blade will show you if you have anything. If not, we're going to click on the create. If you look at this, there are six APIs that's supported in Cosmos DB. The one is the NoSQL. And then you have Portuguese SQL, MongoDB, Apache Cassandra, and then the Cosmos DB for table. And then the last one is the Cosmos DB for Apache Gremlin chart, right? So now each one of these APIs are really uh, supporting those respective stuff. Like if you say you have a MongoDB, that is all supporting the document related uh, stuff getting saved in database, right? So if you're going to take that and migrate to Cosmos DB, yes. Cosmos DB is a good one. It, it will support you, your existing MongoDB stuff and then everything looks good. There's, there's no other special effort that you have to do. So similarly, all these other supporting uh, five stuff are, uh, are, are very good at the Cosmos DB. Now, uh, by default, if you don't know what to choose, if you're new, the best thing that you choose is the SQL API. Okay, the SQL API is supported, the first one. And that's the uh, the core API. We call it as a core API in Cosmos DB, right? So based on your project need, you'll be choosing the API. Remember, once you choose the API when you provision an account, you cannot change it later. So that's why this is important and the very first step to to carefully choose which API you want. I'm going to choose the core API as my default uh, API. Okay, so here you have to provision your stuff. So first thing is the subscription, select the subscription, provide the resource group, provide an account name, it has to be unique, and then the location close by your location. And there are two options called serverless and provisioning throughput. The provisioning throughput right now, there's a default uh, free tier discount that is applicable. You can see it's a 25 GB of storage and the first 1000 RU. I will talk about what is RU, each RU means. So I'm going to choose uh, the provisioning thing so that I can make use of uh, the free tier advantage. So I'll choose that and then the rest of the things I'm going to leave it as the default. Basically, they're all uh, networking the distribution of the Cosmos DB within the region and outside the region. All those things, the backup policies, like how frequently the database has to be backed up, all those things for for our time being, uh, for a simple demo to understand the Cosmos DB and how to access it through the application, this is sufficient. So I'm going to leave it as it is, uh, the default stuff, right? And then uh, provide a tag. This is only for my understanding and for the billing purpose. Uh, tag is all for that purpose. You can you can actually group the resource by the tag. You can get you can see how the billings are happening and all those things. Now. Click on the create and review and create. If everything looks good, it basically says based on what I have chosen, within two minutes, the deployment should be done. Let's wait for a few seconds. The deployment is done. Actually, I paused it. So the deployment is done. You can click on go to resource. It will take you to the Cosmos DB overview and then the quick start page, right? The quick start page, basically, it will prompt you to choose, uh, you know, start creating the containers and then download any of these uh, default apps. Uh, the default code, it will give you the piece of code. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to build the web API itself. So if you click on the launch quick one, it will tell you kind of uh, it will navigate through one and one items and say what it is. Basically, the first one is the database ID and then the second one is the throughput, right? So the thousand are you the request unit is very important. So that is what is given for us. It's free. So I'm going to uh, show you how to do that. So the first one is database. The second one is the throughput, then the container, right? So once you're done with the container, then if you click on create containers, it's going to create a default one, but I'm going to do by myself. So I'll start from first. If you look at this, the free tire, thousand RUs are available. What is RU basically? When you read a data, which is of one kilobyte document size, right? That's called one RU. More than one kilobyte will take n number of RUs, maybe two RUs or three RUs. So that's what it is. So I chose the new database. I gave a name, personal task manager DB, and then the database max unit I'm choosing as manual, not auto scale 400, because I wanted to make use of my thousand stuff, my thousand RUs, right? So I choose like that. I gave a container ID called users, and then there should be a partition key for each of the property. I mean, one of the property in the container, you should give a partition key. Okay. And that partition key will be unique. So I'm giving as user ID because we're going to create two containers called users and the task. 
Okay, so we're going to develop a task management database shortly and then the task management web API also. All right, so I created a user container and if you look at this, it has, uh, we can actually uh, put a JSON data which has these properties, ID, user ID, name, email and settings. It basically shows uh, the user and user's information and it uses specific settings. Now I will uh, do a couple more items so that we, we can add few items inside the user's container. Container, think of container as a table if you translate into RDBMS. Containers are nothing but tables, items are nothing but the records inside the tables, okay? Now the extra thing if you see underscore red self e tag all those are uh, by default the Cosmos DB will add for each and every single item. And if you want to query something there is a default uh, filter where you can directly uh, say select star from C where C dot name like names are nothing but the properties you can query through the properties you can filter it you can also click on the new queries and write a similar queries and get the data that's how you see the data on the Azure portal on on the Azure uh, Cosmos DB account and where the database is set up right so the setup of the database inside that there's a container called users inside that there's an items and under items you can actually do all these things that's how uh, a container and the items are set up okay so we are going to develop a real API that's why I'm setting up these things uh, not just the dummy data okay now the next one is I want to set up another container okay There's another container called tasks so for that click on the new container in the top and it prompted you to the right side of the new container I will choose the existing database and then the name of the database it's already populated container names is nothing but task here i will leave all the properties to be auto indexed and then the partition key here in this container also the user id okay because each user will have n number of tasks so i'm associating based on the user id now everything is good you can add more unique keys and other stuff i'm not doing that for now it's a simple two container with items we're gonna we can we're gonna explore how the cosmos db is efficient so we're done with this and then we got we're gonna copy paste few items uh, with the sample items and so that it goes and stays in the task container and if you look at this e tag just note down this number right so this number every single time when you do an update when you do an update means when you modify some of the information of this particular thing it will change now if you click on the keys there are two keys the primary key and the secondary key all right primary key is what we will use and secondary key is when you have to rotate the keys you need to use the secondary key so that the application is not stopped in between you can also go to the query explorer you can do more queries you can click on connect you will end up seeing the url the primary key the secondary key the connection string everything you can also click on the download sample app and it just follow these things but basically it asks you to create a separate database in the containers based on how the codes are uh, by default pulled up from the Microsoft uh, repository okay so basically it asks uh, us to create a container this if you initiate like this it will create a sample database and then inside that there will be a sample containers and it will itself load data and it will show you how to do it through the code but don't worry all those things .NET code I'm going to show you how to build the web API itself we will do it see it has created a to-do list uh, database inside the to-do list database there will be some containers and you know based on that only it will give you some code uh, after a few seconds see there's an items items is the container name and inside that there are more items there is nothing with the data it's loading and you can come here you can click on download it's going to download because they're all pre-written code that's why this all is available okay so don't worry about the code we'll talk about more in the dotnet core web api in the next video i'll show you how to provision the cosmos db emulator in your local so that you don't even need to set up anything in the azure portal if you're worried about the cost thanks for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!